Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, we are joined by Ben Harpold and Liz Baer of Cybefest Northwest as we talk about Dame Chalk's new San Diego Comic-Con figure rumors. We have images from Transformers Rescue Bots Academy, Track Tower Bumblebee, and Takara Tommy shows off a Transformers 35th Anniversary Convoy and Optimus Prime set. Today is Wednesday, July 10th, 2019, and this is episode 337 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that would like to remind people crossing into Canada for TFCon, marijuana is legal here. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Yusuf, better known as Yoshi. Yo! Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? Good, thanks. You? <sighs> it's funny. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> you know how you hate how Daryl messes up the Let's Talk Transformers line every time? <laughs> every time, but I'm the one getting shit. <laughs> And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hey, man. <laughs> God damn it. Let's talk Transformers. All right. Cool. All right. And uh, as uh, mentioned in the intro, we have some special guests this week joining us on Transmissions. Uh, so big welcome to Ben and Liz, uh, organizers of Cybefest Northwest. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, we have a whole interview uh, talking with Ben and Liz uh, in Transmissions Alt Mode this week, so stay tuned for that. That will be out on Friday. Uh, but here on Wednesday, we're going to talk all about Transformers toys, and they are gracious enough to hang out with us. Uh, so real quick, we do want to mention Sidefest Northwest, so uh, maybe Ben and Liz, you could give a, a quick intro for uh, your uh, your con that's coming up at the end of this month. All right. Uh, Sidefest Northwest is a fan-run Transformer convention. Uh, it's happening uh, July 27th uh, in Kent, Washington, which is just about 30 minutes south of Seattle. It's a one-day show with lots of dealers and activities and games and we'll have david k there signing autographs and a bunch of panels so a a good time to meet fellow transformer fans it's cool you should go <laughs> i'll be there side guns you can hear that <laughs> <laughs> uh, i hear ben's actually going to be doing an interpretive dance to the beast wars theme <laughs> nice <laughs> now i really wish i could make it <laughs> you know i'm halfway uh willing to say i will do that if you come <laughs> <laughs> I, I will make an ass of myself <laughs> to get more people to come to side fest can we have like a karaoke contest for the beast wars theme where everyone just stands still awkwardly for a few seconds and then goes beast wars and <laughs> then they stand there for another you few have seconds. Odd Canadian like Quacho that was yell out beastie. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, uh, we're we're trying to get Yoshi to go. He's the closest of the transmission team who's, who's who could possibly make it there. So keep your fingers crossed for for spe spotting a wild Yoshi up there. But uh, yeah, it should be a fun time. Take it out. And yeah, we'll we'll have lots more information in Transmissions Alt mode, so definitely check that out and you'll you'll hear all about Sidefest Northwest. All right. Well, every episode we always start out with talking about donations, our donatrons, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. You guys keep the show going and you you keep us uh, able to put this episode on every week. And we just want to express our heartfelt thanks to all you people out there. Uh, this week, uh, we are flattered and humbled to see that we have three new Donatrons who signed up uh, just in the last week. Uh, you might be a little bit confused in alt mode when I somehow forget all about this because, uh, <laughs> you know, we might not have recorded these things in order, but uh, I remembered for this show. So just just keep that in mind. 
Thanks to Will, Toby, and Mike Seibert, who have all signed up for the Patreon. And Mike, we will see at TFCon Toronto. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. And I know you guys have already met Mike at TFCon Chicago last year, so I'm looking forward to finally getting the chance to meet Mike and, and mm-hmm. say hi. And and we out. might we might meet Will or Toby. We just we don't know. We just know <laughs> that Mike's made it known that he'll be there. Yes, that's true. So Will and Toby, if you are coming, let us know. Uh, and we are planning a transmissions meetup at TFCon Toronto. So uh, Will, Toby, if you are going to be there, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash meetup. Fill out that survey. Let us know that you're going to join us. And we're, we are organizing, uh, you know, a bunch of fun activities in addition to TFCon. So let and us And they'll also have stickers. Yes, we will have stickers. You might even see those in trips to the store this week as a, as a preview. Uh, also, uh, if, you, uh, if you want to become a Donatrion, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Uh, and you can join the likes of Will, Toby, and Mike uh, in those uh, those very special rank of beautiful people who support this show. Uh, if you can't become a Donatron, you can still support us by buying some merchandise. So if you go to our T Public store, transmissionspodcast.com slash shop, that's where you can buy some transmissions themed t-shirts. Uh, we will have some, uh, at least Daryl and I will be sporting some on display at TFCon Toronto so you can see what they look like and, and hopefully you'll think those designs are cool. Yes, the sexiest of models. <laughs> <laughs> Although I haven't seen Charles in a year, he's probably rocking quite the six pack now. <laughs> uh, not Not quite. <laughs> I, I am happy where I am now, but you know. Uh, also, uh, if you're, uh, you know, if you check out our store, you can also check out friend of the show, uh, K girl. She did all the awesome art for our podcast and she has her own store on T public. So go to T public.com slash user slash superstar K and check out some of her designs, her shirt designs. Now, uh, there's a, there's a voting system I noticed with the shirt designs, Charles. So if somebody doesn't like one or any of our shirt designs on the site, they can simply reshare this episode to let us know. And we'll just count the reshares as dislikes. Oh, okay. (laughs) It's, it's a free way to let us know that you don't like what we're doing. All right. That's uh, you're you're welcome. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. (laughs) What Yoshi's trying to say is share the show so more people will listen. No, no, that's I want to know how you feel about our shirt designs. That's not what I said. It's like you're not listening. I love you, man. Don't you love me? <laughs> Pay attention. I feel like it's a one way relationship right now. So do I, Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, uh, before we get into the toy news, do want to remind you that uh, the, the other Mike, our, our producer, excellent producer of the show, Mike Ordway, his new podcast, Empire of Rust, episode one, that is out right now. That should be in the feed, uh, in the main Transmissions podcast feed. It's a it's under the Transmissions podcast network umbrella. Uh, it's a Transformers role playing game, live uh, actual play podcast. So Mike is the game master, and he's running it with a bunch of his friends. Uh, it's a really cool new uh, you know new Transformers uh, themed production. It's the first and only Transformers themed role playing game uh, podcast that's out there. So definitely check it out. So go to transmissionspodcast.com slash rust for more info. All right, now let's get into talking about some toy news. All right. Well, the first thing I wanted to talk about this week was I came across a new crowdfunding project being done and this is from make toys now they are doing another seeker they all they have already done the yellow seeker i can't remember what they called them but that was a success so they're doing another one and it's purple they're calling him pyro trail and he is currently listed 
um, on their crowdfunding site. This is the Make Toys crowdfund site, so it's not through uh, Kickstarter or anything like that. And it's currently listed at 970 Hong Kong dollars, which uh, in today's exchange comes to $124.37 U.S., um, which is a little bit more than what their the uh, retail is going for for the uh, the seekers. I think it's 120 for the re- uh, other seekers, but um, it's a pretty much the same. So it's almost a wash. But uh, yeah, if you're going to try and collect the rainmakers, um, this uh, this might be something you're looking for. This is a really cool mold, and they're they're really getting the, uh, a good run out of it. But uh, yeah, this is something else here. Um, I know I don't think we followed the the sun. Storm one to its Solar completion. Flare. Solar flare is that what it was called? Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's uh, currently they're only producing five hundred of these things, and they've sold fifty five of them so far. So it's eleven percent funded, and it's got one month and twenty six days remaining of this uh, crowd fund. Um, they're hoping to get this thing done, and it, it's looking pretty good. It's got a different type of blaster on it than I haven't seen before. It looks like it's got a a blaster with a, a hose attached to it, like a shockwave type uh, type deal. Um, Jeremy, have you seen anything like this before? I haven't. It actually looks like it plugs into where his wings are. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm-hmm. It does say on the page, it says, custom-made fire blaster included, which is kind of neat. Yeah. What do you think of this thing? I mean, it, it looks nice. It you know, the Seekers are always fun. I, I have more confidence in them because they have already done a successful one before in the crowdfunding thing. I still would prefer going through a, a more reputable site that's like Kickstarter, that Indiegogo, you know, someone sure. that is more well-known and respected rather than doing it yourself. But, you know, they did Solar Flare. It works. It looks like they, they have a, a low goal that is attainable so oh, completely attainable yeah. yeah so i mean i don't think they're going to cut it off at 500 i think 500 is the limit where they're like okay if we get 500 we'll make it if we fund 600 of them we'll make 600 i think is how they're going to do it but they won't do anything unless they get 500 i think that hose uh gun thing is a reference to the first episode of g1 oh, right. likely when they shoot the fire around uh wheeljack and bumblebee yeah, that's cool. right. I think that's really neat. Um, ben, what what are your thoughts on this thing? I personally don't collect third party, but I can look at these and and really appreciate all the work that goes into them. It it looks really cool. As with any seeker design, uh, it's going to get a lot of use <laughs> with all the different repaints. But yeah, it looks it looks really cool. I'm still I'm still rocking the uh, deluxe Star Scream seeker mold in my. Uh, classics collection mm-hmm. so i'm uh, that's a, that's a good figure I, I i'm i'm still happy with it i'm content with uh leaving it that and not <laughs> buying more uh charles um i, I know that you're you're kind of slowing down on the, the the big masterpiece scale stuff but uh can you appreciate the 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 people that are going for the the masterpiece scale rainmakers yeah i mean this is a this is cool i mean it's a it's nice to have something a little bit unique in a seeker design. So having this little uh, flamethrower attachment is a, is a nice addition to be honest. It's hard for me to get excited about seeker designs these days. I mean, um, uh, I'm, I'm kind of secret out. I mean, it's cool, but I mean, and it's iconic and everything, but uh, I'm, I'm not really, I, you know, I've got I've got a few star screams. I, I don't need any more seekers at, at this point, but it's cool for the people who want it. Liz, uh, what's uh, what do you, what are your thoughts on uh, on Pyro Trail here? I don't know. He looks nice. Uh, he looks kind of flat to me, if that makes sense. But I think the crowdfunding idea is pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I think it. You know, if it works for him, it works for him, and that way. You know, if you want the toy, you get the toy, and you get to support the company at the same time. So, mm-hmm. works for me. And lastly, Yoshi. What uh, episode one? This is a, a figure that doesn't get made very often. 
You're talking to somebody who has backed several crowdfunding uh, projects in the past and only been burnt a few times. So I like how this figure looks. I love the detail on the wing. Um, I like the little square that's like, hey, here's where the insignia sticker goes when you get your insignia stickers for this thing. What I hate to see is the fact that they're not showing this thing off to its full potential. Why is there just one picture? Why didn't they take a handful of pictures? Why didn't they make a little promo video? Why aren't they really trying to push this thing? Like uh, what one would expect from a crowdfunding page nowadays. That part I don't understand. It's like they're, I don't know, they they should be putting their best foot forward. And even if this thing's in a rough pre-build or beta build stage, show us what the potential is. Show us, show us the angle. Show us what we're going to get when it's transformed. Show us the tire. Show us everything so that you get our money instead of one side view that has us questioning it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good point. I'm in the same place, yeah. That's, I think that you conveyed what I wanted a lot better when I said it looked flat. I mean, the, the toy I'm looking at right now is just like, you know, I can't see a lot of the details on it. I can't, I, I, see, a, I see a seeker and it's purple and that's about all I got. Mm-hmm. So. You were mentioning the, the detail on the wings. It actually makes the legs look very plain. They're very smooth and there's not much in the way of lines on those compared to the wings. You know, there's a there's a point where where you can add those line details and it becomes muddy or too busy to look at. And, Definitely. And you know, this is this is also a uh, an early uh, version of this figure. So maybe maybe we'll see a change when it goes in. Maybe we won't. Um, maybe they've already decided. You know, that's just too busy. I, it, it certainly looks like they're trying really hard to keep that the look from the the cartoon. And which kind of makes me question why put the detail on the wings in the first place. Uh, and the only thing I can think of is they wanted you to know where to put the sticker. So we're just making it look like it's not just so you know where to put the sticker. Mm. I, this is all speculation. And that's why you guys are listening. <laughs> like I said, this thing is uh, just started. So there's only 11 uh, uh, days done so far, I think right now. So uh, you've got a lot of time to uh, to consider this and, and back it if you're you're into it. But uh, I got one more t- topic I wanted to talk about, and this is uh, more rumors uh, that uh, we're talking about for upcoming Siege figures. We talked about some from for SDCC on uh, the last show, but uh, these ones here um, are also posted on Dime Chalk's uh, Facebook page, so he seems to be getting a lot of this stuff. I don't know where, but... Uh, um, we're going to go run through this uh, this list of rumors again, uh, just to see if uh, any of them come true. So, uh, again, these are all siege figures. Um, up first is a deluxe Cybertron Hotspot, or sorry, Hot Shot. Uh, this is going to be a repaint of Hound, and we kind of figured this one was coming because of Hound's head sculpt. It's uh, basically Hot Shot's head sculpt. Uh, up next is a G1 toy colored special packaged refractor. This is what we kind of thought about was ho- hopefully going to happen when we saw refractor. This spe- special packaging mimics a real world designed camera box set, includes a flash lens and button pad. Uh, includes three but or three all three robots also painted to be G1 toy accurate. So there you go, Yoshi. Uh, if that comes to pass, then uh, you'll be able to pick that up. Does that not piss you off at all, Daryl? No, I don't care. Okay. All right. We got a deluxe Nightbird. So this would be one of the figures from the G1 cartoon, one of the one-off shows. Nightbird it looks to be a repaint of Chromia with a new uh, with an accurate head sculpt. Siege Chromia was that the one that was not given that the the combination gimmick? Yes, they took the combiner port out of the Siege Chromia. Right, okay. So, still no fourth female combiner. So, it, it, this one, this also, this rumor says it's likely a Transformers Generation Selects figure for, for Nightbird. We've got uh, Deluxe Power Dashers. This is a repaint of Brunt with an accurate head sculpt for the Power Dashers. Um, then a Deluxe Decepticon Impactor uh, featuring a different paint deco or deco. 
Um, new mult, uh, Micro Master 10 packs. That's a lot of Micro Masters, which are repaints of the original release versions, but in a box set. So that'd be kind of cool. Next, we've got Leader Shockwave, but in Galactic Man deco. This would be kind of cool since that was the original release of a, a Shockwave. Shockwave. A Shockwave, yeah. <laughs> And this, they're saying full black shockwave, although I remember Galactic Man being gray, but whatever. And this, there's one more, and this is this last one we actually got sent some information as well. Yeah, Jeremy, what you had to... Oh, yeah. So, who's back? Deep throating? Is, is it deep throating back? We we got we got some information about this next particular inf- rumor out of the blue, and then it appears as the, as a part of this rumor list. So three more seekers, three more tetra jets, but painted up as the rainmakers. And these would be in a three pack. So a three pack of rainmakers, um, all colored up in the green, yellow, and blue decos that they were given in the G1 cartoon, and released in a three pack. So that's kind of cool. And this one, this one, we were given a little bit more information, of, like just just confirmation from our from our deep throating source uh, that this is this is a, in fact a thing. So. It kind of lends credence to the fact that the rest of these are actually a thing, too. So we just can't confirm or deny any of those. I just think that's really cool. Is any of these, other than Yoshi and the uh, the, the refractor toy-colored one, do any of these stand out to uh, to any of you? I mean, yeah, for uh, f- the refractor is the thing that that I would be interested in, and that does make me a little <laughs> a little upset that it's if it's going to be an exclusive for sdcc because i i would really like the three and it's reflector for me so i would like the three a three pack of reflectors i would really like or spyglass viewfinder and spectro if they're if they're gonna color them in their toy accurate colors the classic hasbro dick move is what this is (laughs) i mean we called it before they released it so i mean we kind of knew that this was something that was kind of an obvious repaint option for them yeah it's just you know they they should make them more plentiful in the stores because yeah i mean i mean the fact that they're being released in in sets of in boxes of two right that just that's a dick move too but whatever liz does anything stand out on this list of something that you would want to pick up i like tetra jets i think they're cool i don't uh i avoid toy collecting now due to wallet issues but anything like anytime i see anything tetra jet i'm like yeah, they're doing the thing. Right on. I really like that the idea of do, of having an official shockwave. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. cool. I don't have the leader shockwave, the new one, and I think it would be cool to get when that's like gray and black. Uh, ben, like I was saying before, um, I'm kind of passed on the the Voyager seekers just because I don't want to rebuy everything. Uh, the the Nightbird sounds interesting, and I'm kind of curious how the Power Dashers will be. But the uh, I I wish I could get all the extra reflector bits for the current release, mm-hmm. the ones uh, the refractor release. Yeah. Um, because I like that color scheme, and I like them being kind of a uh, clones of each other. Uh, but I I I don't know if I could justify buying a a box set to try to get just parts. But I have yet to even find any of the refractors in stores, so I'm, I'm still on the hunt for those. So, if I can find the uh, the refractor, I'd, I'd probably pick that up. Even though I'm 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 currently two thirds away from, or, or yeah, I'm two thirds in on getting the the retail release one. I'd still I'd still probably double dip on a full block set of refractors. Use one as a toy box one, and a, or a toy color one, and a one as a cartoon colored one. But other than that, I think this is a really cool list. Like I said, I think the uh, the Rainmakers or the Seekers uh, box set is kind of the one we we kind of knew about. But again, these are all rumors. Nothing's been officially released by nobody, so take them with a grain of salt. This is two sources reporting the same information now. So 
Yeah. Um, but that's it. That's what I brought to the table this week. Uh, Jeremy, what do you got? I have uh, something about a crowdfunding pro- uh, project in Japan. I, I can't remember if we've talked about this before, uh, but this is by TV Kun in Japan. And this is a crowdfunding that is going to be take, taking place from July 1st to July 31st. And again, it's Japan only. Uh, there are two levels. One is at 16,800 yen, and then one is at 22,000 yen. Uh, and that's the Matrix Box Edition, which is limited to 500 sets. And it says they're expecting 2,000 supporters. If they get more than 3,000, more prizes can be expected. And the set contains a Convoy Golden Trophy, which is a G1 Optimus Prime toy that's affixed to a pedestal in robot mode. But it's transformable, I guess still affixed to the the, the podium. But the, there's a picture here of it. The cab is transformed into the truck mode, which is cool. And it's all golden. And this is the thing that kind of blew me away. A STARS membership kit. It's a, a full reprint of the 1985 STARS membership kit, including a cardboard Transformers Command Center, a membership card, a Transformers patch, a poster with, um, it looks like the, is it the Metroplex box art? And a Transformer book, and it says there's some more stuff. And then it looks like you get an illustration book of Japanese packaging art. That is a lot of really cool stuff. I I really wish it's something that I could get in on. Um, Yoshi, this seems to be kind of right up your alley with some of the G1 stuff. Dude, I really want this. I mean, the stars set. I mean, yeah, the stars set for sure. I would imagine the Optimus Prime would break in thirty seconds, just knowing how gold plastic well, tends, I, sent, tends to. I don't know if this itself. is actual gold plastic. It could just be painted. It's just painted. Oh, okay. It's what they do with the lucky draws. The same how what they do with lucky draw figures. But yeah, I mean, if this were something I could bid on, I would have bid on it twice by now. Liz, I know, I know you're not into the toy collecting, but it's fine. That's uh, that's my official opinion. It's, it's fine. fine. Oh. This is like this is nostalgia from like twenty years before she was born. So. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry about it. <laughs> Get it for your dad for a birthday present. I I dig it. Um, but it's uh, it's also something that I don't really need, and I would struggle to find shelf space mm-hmm. to to truly properly display it. And so you know, I'm trying to be a little bit more picky about what I get. But yeah, it's to me, it's like you're buy, you get to buy a lucky draw, which is kind of cool. Yeah. But it also takes away that kind of special rarity of it if anybody can buy it. But I've never been one to really care about that stuff. But I, I like the idea of being able to get the uh, the headquarters, the cardboard headquarters again, and stuff like that. I think that would be awesome. Well, if you got it, would you punch it out and put it together? I would, and I probably would play play with it with my son. Okay. I would find it hard to actually punch it out. Charles, how about you? This is pretty awesome. I, I did. I had the stars membership kit when I was a kid. I, I, you know, I got the robot points. I sent them away and I got the little command center and everything. Uh, so yeah, of course mine was in English, of course, cause it was mm-hmm. from Hasbro, not from Takara, but this is super cool. I, I mean, I wish Hasbro would do something like this. This is, yeah. this is really nice. This would um, be a great San Diego exclusive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's also, it's it's nice. I, I'd see the Metroplex box art. So contrast this with what we saw from the the puzzles that were that are coming out, the jigsaw puzzles. So you can see how this is the box art we got in the U.S. Uh, with Metroplex, and actually, it looks like it's flipped here. Like it, I, at least I remember the box art being where Metroplex is on the left instead of the right, but. Yeah, I think you're right. Oh, whatever. <laughs> but uh yeah, so this is the box art we got in the US uh compared to the the other Metroplex box art that the, that's going to be turned into the um the jigsaw puzzles, but that's a that's a separate issue. But that yeah, this is a cool set. The gold plated Optimus Prime is cool and yeah, this is makes me wish I was living in Japan and could could get this. I guess I could probably mm-hmm. import it, but uh probably would add to the expense. Yeah. 
Uh, I, I am showing it, it is currently 23% funded. What's the cost? 16,800 yen or 22,000 yen. So, so 160 that, bucks? Yeah, 160 to 220. So would you get in on that if you could? It's tough. That's a, it's like yes. just over the, just over the line on which something I, I buy a gold Optimus statue, and a, a book of papers. It's cool, but I'd probably pass. All right. Well, I think we'll keep people updated on how this goes, and if you are in Japan or know people in Japan and get in on this, let us know. I'm I'm curious to see the quality of everything you get with it. So uh, that is everything I got. Yoshi, what do you have this week? Well, this week, uh, Takara Tommy Mall's website has been updated to include the listing for a Transformers 35th Anniversary Convoy and Optimus Prime set. This will contain the G1 Convoy Optimus Prime reissue with the tall smokestacks, uh, no, uh, no trailer, and the Studio Series Bumblebee movie Optimus Prime. Um, and these uh, will be packaged together for roughly a hundred bucks. Uh, I believe the orders are limited to three per person, and I think they're expected to ship in late December. It seems a little pricey to me. Uh, it doesn't seem like they uh, they've learned a whole lot from their fifty dollar uh, G one Optimus Prime issue at Walmart. But what's your take on it, Daryl? Um, the box is amazing. The box looks awesome. Or boxes, I guess. Um, Because it's two separate, right? Um, Uh Uh-huh. I think they they look fantastic. I'm trying to figure out whether they've changed the coloring on the uh, movie Optimus. Maybe, you know, cartooned it up a little bit. And I think they have. But other than that, I mean, I I, I like it. I like the idea of doing it. I probably wouldn't be too interested in doing the... uh, the G1 Optimus, just because it's it's been done. But I like the idea of the movie Optimus getting the G1 box treatment. Uh-huh. It looks cool. It does look cool. Liz, this screams Christmas presents on it. One for your dad and one for you. What do you think? Exactly. I think, uh, it, like they say, it's a cool idea with the boxes, I think. Um, they both look really nice. I don't know. There's a lot of Optimuses happening. There is, yeah. I feel like, uh, I mean, it, there, there's a reason for that. It's because, you know, it sells and it's going to be Christmas presents. Exactly. It's another Optimus. Movie Optimus looks pretty good. I kind of like the, I'm one of those people that kind of likes the the weird, like, pipe details, like in his midsection that we can see. Uh-huh. Um, I think those are always kind of cool. Other than that, it's, uh, to me, it's just kind of another Optimus release, so. Gotcha. So, Jeremy, this screams Christmas present. One for your son, one for you. What do you think? <laughs> no. But <What>? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Bluntly said. <laughs> no, it's just he's still a bit too young for, for these, and he's not going to get any movie-verse toys. Okay. I, I'm, not, I'm not that cruel of a parent. Gotcha. I, I will say I, the box art is great. I'm, just, I'm not a fan of... Even the Bumblebee movie design, it's better than the other movies, but I don't know. There's just something proportionally that it just seems off on it. But seeing it here next to the G1, I'm like, why couldn't they have painted the eyes yellow to match the G1? That mm. that would have been a nice little touch. It seems, I mean, if, if Daryl's right and they did uh, lighten up the colors or change the colors here to give it more of a G1 look, why they didn't bother yeah, with I mean, that? The red and the silver seems to match pretty closely. Hmm. What's your take, Ben? Uh, I have my G1 Prime, and I'm kind of done with the movie stuff. I, I'm not one to... I don't hate the movie, the movies like some fans are. I don't think they're good movies. I think they're... I'm entertained by them, but I wouldn't recommend them to anybody. But uh, and I, I truly did enjoy the Bumblebee movie. But I really... I've kind of sold off most of my movie figures, so I don't really want to go down that road again and having already have the g1 it's just like i'm sure this is for people that aren't me and and while it's uh it's got cool packaging i i can't buy things just for packaging anymore it just doesn't make sense for me but it's cool yeah 
And Charles, I don't know if you know this, but this comes out just before Christmas. Has your wife picked out your Christmas gift yet? <laughs> <laughs> well, knowing her, she probably already has. But uh, uh, I would, I, I think this is this is way overpriced. I mean, the uh, the box art is very cool. That, that's a, that's really the selling point for this. But I mean, both of these figures are. I mean, these figures are maybe fifty dollars with a trailer i mean and that's pushing it but without trailers it's just it's too much it's i mean hey yoshi yeah when does this figure come out <laughs> uh late december just in time for christmas you'll have just enough time to wrap it up oh christmas really and supposedly big sm or tall smokestacks do you think this would make a good christmas gift i think if you need a Christmas gift, this would fill that void, or the stocking, as it were. That's a that's a good way to uh, to put that. It's you're pretty much buying two gifts. Like like you could get one for you and one for someone else, maybe. E exactly, exactly. That is so cool. You get to keep the good one and give out the bad one. Well, if you have somebody that you want to give like a lump of coal to, <laughs> right? Then you then you have a movie figure for that. I wasn't I wasn't going to point at any particular <laughs> love for any particular version, but you're a hundred percent right there, Ben. You're a hundred percent right. <laughs> I think I'm the, pandering at that point. I think the Bumblebee movie designs are markedly better than the, than the cut other. His mic. Cut his mic. Cut his mic. I can tell who's who at least. You just need to f freeze the video. That's that's how you tell. You have to <laughs> freeze it and then just go. Okay, I think I know who that is now. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's what I've got. Uh, ben, you've got something, don't you? Uh, yeah, I I had the uh, <laughs> the Rescue Bots uh, Bumblebee a Academy Track Tower, which that I think sure is, just, is a thing. That's it's so bizarre looking. It's awesome. Uh, me being a Bumblebee collector, I, I have to get it. And I just appreciate the, the sheer bizarreness of it. And I, I imagine um, this in the continuity of the storytelling of them building a base and going, well, what should it look like? And then Bumblebee just goes, I want it to look like me. And so then they have to design a giant yellow base to stay in disguise, which is just awesome to me. I think the kid on the back kind of looks like yours. I have to look now. <laughs> no... Not really. If you put glasses on. Hair's too curly. <laughs> but the bumblebee on the front is like, yay, buy this. I like the first comment on TFW is, I don't know if I like it, but I just bought it. Which is, <laughs> which is how I feel. <laughs> I think we learned who, what Ben's handle is over there. No, it's not mine. <laughs> my, my handle's <laughs> Hollywood Hoist on TFW. No. Okay. I haven't bought it yet. I, I have a birthday coming up, so that, that might be on my birthday list. <laughs> and it's also the day before Sidefest, so or day after Sidefest, so now I know uh if that shows up I might pick it up at the at the con. I notice this thing has the simplest transformation I've ever seen. You just push it over. Well it a lot of a lot of those one step or uh but the gravity bots also had those as well from the movies. I, I guess my question is, how is this not more than the G1 Optimus, or how is this the same, not more than the G1 Optimus Prime? It's all plastic. It's just crazy. And it comes with a and lot. It, and it's not uh, catering to adults. Yeah. I, I think this is really great for the, you know, three, four-year-old age range. I mean, my kid's just now getting into Hot Wheels. So this would kind of fit in with that. Something he could put any any small car into and have it just shoot out. You know, it looks like a lot of fun for that age range, but I'm probably not going to get it for him because it looks really big and I don't want to have more excuses for random toys or random cars to be on the ground for me to step on. <laughs> well, see, my son grew up with rescue bots. Rescue bots came out when he was just before two. He is nine and he still plays with his rescue bots, even though he has far more complex transformers. So he's totally invested in the characters. So I think the idea that uh, at, at a certain age they, they move on from this stuff isn't necessarily the uh, what's happening well, with I mean, at least at some us. kids. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> True. 
Daryl, do you want to get in and justify why this thing doesn't have rubber tires? <laughs> I'll just say this is not for me. <laughs> okay. Uh, Charles, you have children and a wife for that matter. Um, what do you think? My children and my wife are all too old for this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> my my uh, my son just got rid of all his rescue bot stuff uh, this year. I oh, mean, that had to hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's he, he, my my son is twelve. My daughter is eight. She's playing with like she just plays with the uh, the transformers I get. So like she grabs any anything I get to show off at trips to the store. It's left hanging around. She grabs it and just plays with it. I think the rescue bot stuff is is really for the you know the three to five toddler you know toddler to preschool set. It's the gateway transformer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Liz, do you got anything? On Bumblebee, I'd like to say that objectively, Rescue Bots is the best Transformers show ever made. But also, this toy is pretty cute. If you're if you're if you're if you're a little kid or you have little kids, uh, this is, this would be fun for them, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But moving on, uh, I brought uh, for show and tell. I got Greenlight uh, from Amazon Prime Day exclusive. Despite Prime Day not being for another week, uh, they've already listed a bunch of stuff as Amazon tends to do. Uh, Prime Day has not uh, for another week, and there are only two left on Amazon, so if you want green light, you need to get her now. Um, she comes with a cat named Dazzle Strike, and I like the cat more than I like green light, I think. But uh, she's got a cool little flame decoration to go with her. And uh, doesn't I'm not finding any pictures of her combining in any way, but from reading discussion, it looks like there's some mods that you can buy that'll do that for you. I do. I like little flame detail. The sculpt's not bad. It's a little bulky for my taste, but uh, I think just facts. The cat is the best part. She looks pretty good. She's uh 25 bucks for the. Uh, they call it a two pack, but it's a it's a bot and a weapon. So. Yeah, she is a remold of the uh, Moon Racer slash uh, Firestar uh, mold, which does have the combiner ports. Like she does, she is not like Chromia, where they remove the combiner ports, so she has them intact. So you can combine oh, okay, her. Okay, I see. All right. Yeah. You mean Nova Star? It's been a while since I bought any combiners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're uh, they they can't be bothered to make more than one mold for girls. So. <laughs> well, but you're not bitter. I'm not bitter. When... Well, maybe they'll make yellow light and red light as well. <laughs> there you go. It does bring up, um, do they have green lights on Cybertron? Do they have red lights on Cybertron? <laughs> just, I don't just have in a their ton eyes. of opinions on this toy. <laughs> it, it looks nice. I like the cat. That's my, uh, that's my final opinion, is the cat is good. There is a, the cat is a repaint of uh, Lionizer, which is a single, you can buy that on, it was a Wave 1 Siege Cybertron toy. Okay, well, I guess I'll be buying that then. One thing I think is funny with the description here is um, in the description... Cybertron. Yeah, Cybertron is uh, is listed as two words like six times in here. <laughs> I like the sword. Yeah, I like the little... Uh, the flame is probably one of my favorite parts. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a, the the one, the, the toy that uh, that comes separately comes with a blue flame. So for anybody uh, listening and going, what what the hell is she talking about? She doesn't know what she's talking. I don't know what I'm talking about. I just wanted to play too. <laughs> so I uh, picked a toy and I was like, yeah, all right. So I only collect Windblade and RCs. There's a link to just the, the little lion guy if you want it. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> $5.30 is much better than $25. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I just want the cat. I just placed the order for it. <laughs> it'll be here on tuesday the damage of one click buying <laughs> so it'll it'll be it, you'll have it before this episode goes up so by the time everyone's yeah. listening to this show hey guys i just got the cat and i really like it <laughs> that's an I'm official gonna, review everybody i'm gonna army build them let's see what else we can get her to buy <laughs> there's a bumblebee track set that i think you should get <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna buy that too put the cat in it he'll slide down what is everyone else's thoughts on green light uh i have the moon racer i have moon racer and chromia so those, those are both 
similar to that mold and it's a yeah it's a good mold i i do want more uh you know more varied molds for female transformers that would be nice to not have the same mold over and over again uh so but yeah i mean i'm good for for this mold i've already got two of them so uh but yeah if if you like the color green and you like this mold this is uh, i guess a good choice i mean it's a nice green it's a really interesting green i don't know if we have any other any other figures that same shade she's here and she's gonna steal shockwaves energy <laughs> <laughs> all right i think it's just you charles all right uh so i have a um we have some new legends scaled uh third party figures so uh you know we are big fans uh, on transmissions of the stuff that iron factory does uh, in the legend sized uh third party transformers market and now the company new age is uh getting into that game with some legend scaled g1 styled insecticons uh and we've got two versions of them we've got uh their original uh just the original designs and then uh another version that are have g1 cartoon colors as a variant so uh if you are interested in uh i guess a toy more toy accurate or cartoon accurate you can uh you can take your pick uh, these are uh kickback bombshell and shrapnel uh, of course they cannot be named that they are uh abaddon uh asmodeus and burial uh, they should have so. named that one shrapnel <laughs> i guess hasbro got the name back didn't they they did yeah God, they... but yeah i mean these are cool they come with energon cubes which is always a nice so cute <laughs> nice little uh um accessory there and yeah and and they they each have weapons and yeah, I mean, the Insecticons were famously, they cloned themselves in the cartoons, so these might be a candidate for army building if you want to get multiple ones. And yeah, these are, uh, these are cool figures. I mean, I don't think we don't, do we have a, I don't think we have a price for these. Uh, I, I would imagine maybe in the like $60 range for all three figures. Uh, since Absolutely they, reasonable. I mean, don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm just guessing. Yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, there will probably be more information at TFCon. They are pre-orderable right now on BBTS. Um, for the animation colors are five dollars more, but the regular colors are sixty four ninety nine. Oh, okay. Right on target. Cool. Look at me. <laughs> I should go on prices right. Liz, what do you think of these guys? Are you a fan of the Insecticons? I'm a fan of the Energon cubes. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean I, I like the I like the Insecticons, and I, I'm one of those people that gets sucked into army building really easily, so I can't go anywhere near these. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, in terms of the the color scheme, would you go uh, toy or cartoon? Cartoon. Okay. Cool. Was that the wrong answer? I'm sorry. No, no. <laughs> no <it's not. laughs> You're like, oh. <laughs> no, no. I, I'm sorry. My my okay was not meant to be dismissive or uh, or condescending. I, I am a Charles can be a bit of a dick. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Don't freak me out. Liz, I appreciate everything you've done for Sidefest, but we're gonna have to let you go. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh. No, I mean, I, I I am a fan of the Insecticons from the cartoon, so I would probably go cartoon as well. So, yeah. All right, Ben, we're putting you on the spot now. Toy or cartoon? I, I, I would go with cartoon. All right. Now who's out of sight for this? <laughs> I know. I'm going to fire myself. But I'm I'm pretty happy with the uh, Hasbro Insecticons they've released over the last couple of years, so... I'm not really the market for these guys, but they they do look really cool. All right, I and I also like the Energon cubes. Yeah, those are cool. Those you don't you don't. Uh, I mean, you're typically not going to get those accessories from Hasbro, unfortunately. Or, although I guess they had a didn't they have a box set where they I think they put some of the yeah. G one like they did a G one reissue. They did re release the original G ones uh, Insecticons with some Energon cubes. Yeah. So, uh, Daryl, what do you think of these guys? They're very cool. Um, personally, I, I don't, uh, 
I don't see a big difference between the the two color schemes. Um, so I'd probably take the take the five dollar cheaper version. It's expensive for for three little figures. Um, but I think they're cool. They look they look good, and uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, they're a nice little addition to the uh, the Legends scale um, line. And New Age is is doing some really good stuff, so I assume their transformation is really cool. All right, Yoshi, I know you're you're also a fan of the Legend scaled figures. So what do you think? I love these things. You love these things. We love these things together. It's gross. <laughs> I would say beautiful, but okay. <laughs> you don't have That's to shame us. <laughs> But uh, yeah, no, I, I I super dig them, and this would be like an impulse buy if I saw them at uh, at a convention. This is not a uh, go to go to BBTS and buy it for me, but it's it would be an mm-hmm. impulse buy. Just like if I ever see a legend scaled, what is Omega Supreme? I would do that in a heartbeat. All right, Jeremy, what do you think? I really like them too. Uh, I would love to pick them up if I saw them at a convention, but I would also love it if they just had the Energon Cube by themselves. I think Legends mm-hmm. scaled Energon Cubes would be very nice to just use with any figure. Yeah, I do I we do we do ran, run into some folks at uh like at, at past TF cons we had some folks who were just selling little Energon Cubes, but they were they were a little bit bigger, I guess. Yeah, not, Energon Cubes was the first third-party thing I ever bought back in 2004 at BotCon. Oh, okay. <laughs> back before there really was a third party. It was just an accessory. All right, well, that's all our toy discussion for this episode, so we're going to move on to Trips to the Store. This is where we show off all the awesome Transformers merchandise we got this week. We do this as a video on YouTube so you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. Uh, We also put the audio right here in the podcast, so keep listening and we'll describe everything in loving detail. Uh, But you should really go to the YouTube later and, and see everything as well. So without further ado, trips to the store. All right, uh, let's talk about the stuff we got this week. So, Yoshi, start us off. I got nothing new, Charles, so I dug deep. I dug deep into my artistic heart. Uh, And uh, I have a sketch cover I had done from TFCon 2016 by Jason Reyes. James This is an... James Reyes, sorry. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I saw him in Celebration. This is an homage to uh, Fight Club with uh, uh, Cup and Hot Rod. And the glare sucks, but there it is. This is on a Transformers Regeneration 1 comic convention 2013 cover. And and here's the picture of him handing it to me because he's swanky. Mm-hmm. That was cool. Nice. Thank you. It's beautiful. It was the second sketch cover I've ever had done. That's it. All right. <laughs> wow you get applause wow <laughs> someone understands art in this room finally <laughs> all right liz uh we come to you uh one of the organizers of Sidefest northwest thanks for joining us so speaking of art um i am moving in with my girlfriend in about a month and she's not as nerdy as i am so we'll probably not want to cover the walls in art so I got some coffee table uh, art portfolios. They're upside down. But uh, put all my art... You can't see any of it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> put all my art yeah, in those. That's cool. Bunch of Transformers stuff. Bunch of... Nice. Fill up the whole thing with that. And then I got a smaller one for all the commissions I get done. And my thing is I commission uh, Windblade a lot and Ahsoka uh, from Star Wars. Uh, so I've got Brendan Cahill did that of them together. Ooh. And uh, I like uh, comparing just the different ways that all the different artists draw her. And, you know, I mean, anything from Corn Howell to Josh Burcham's styles are very different. And it shows when they're right next to each other. Um, and I think that's just a, a cool collection to have. Uh, and it, it ends up... I, I stopped collecting toys and I was like, oh, I really like art. And it turned out that was more expensive. So, <laughs> and you can't resell it either. So, 
But uh, so that was my uh, trip to the store that has taken place over several years since Sidefest number one actually it was where I first got a print, and then just kept building them from there. And now I've got I filled up two of these, so that's a uh, they're forty eight pages each, so close to a hundred. Wow. So not counting the ones that have multiple pieces on each one. That's another motto for Sidefest. Come to Sidefest and start an addiction. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've I've actually recently started a Superman sketchbook like that where different artists do their takes on Superman. Not Transformers. That's not related. Transformers it's related. Not. Get it's the just, fuck yeah. off the show. I, I'm not familiar with that robot. What <laughs> what is he from? <laughs> Has there been a DC crossover? So it could uh, be. There, there was rumors of one, but it fell through. It's like the the Star Wars crossover. Yeah. So I actually have, if I can show off a very specific piece, Matt Kubalt does, uh, he's at uh, Sidefest every year, and I always get a commission from him. Uh, and I had him draw Ahsoka, but I asked him to do the bad like Transformers take on all the... They had the really bad yep. Star Wars Transformers, and I had him draw one. Oh. <laughs> oh, and she she cut the, off her her. Um... Yeah, she has one of those launch rings that they have in Star Wars, and that's part of her transformation. But it's like a huge, bulky, ugly backpack, and she carries her lightsabers backwards. So, oops. <laughs> and, yeah. So he did that with uh, uh, Mike Seibert. Actually, asked him to draw Boba Fett, and he drew the Star Wars uh, Transformer Boba Fett, and I thought that was funny. So I asked him to do it with Ahsoka. Yeah, Matt is an amazing artist, and he he actually has drawn my first my favorite uh, art print I've ever I've ever gotten, and it's a uh, Grimlock in Dino mode trying to play the guitar, which is <laughs> oh, makes me nice. laugh. Arms are too short. Arms are too short. Yep. Well, that's all I've got. So a bunch of art uh, that I put together in a book so that my girlfriend won't get mad at me. Ben, we come to you. What do you got? Um, so, uh, my family did a road trip uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, one thing that we don't have in the Pacific Northwest is uh, Family Dollar, which is where a lot of those authentic uh, Transformers show up. And so I picked up the 5-inch authentic Bumblebee, <laughs> which clearly I have not opened it, uh, and I probably won't because there's really not much to it. Mm-hmm. and it's going to sit on a shelf anyway. So, so yeah, so I, I picked that up. It's not an exciting piece, but it's another one for my Bumblebee collection. So, why you got to get two so you can open one. No, I've stopped doing that. <laughs> it was at one point getting three one in robot, one in vehicle, and Ooh. one in package. Um, we, we call that a full shelf. I can't even display anything, <laughs> half the stuff I have anymore. So, hence the reason I beat. Perez and Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's, that's my contribution. Congratulations on getting to Family Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It was epic. <laughs> fa- that's fam- cool, though, that you got to get your Bumblebee. Family Dollars are plentiful in the Pittsburgh yeah. area. So. <laughs> yeah. Here in the Midwest, they're everywhere. Yeah. All right, Jeremy, we come to you. All right. I got a few things this week. Uh, I almost pulled a Shelton on the Transformers number eight, but I didn't. I got the cover A and cover B, so I really wanted the Casey Collar one. I almost got the retailer incentive, but I put it back at the last second. Why? The art was was that Guido? Yeah, I think it was Guido doing the the art. Uh huh. So it, it was Is that just your explanation. What? Is that the why? Well, it was Guido Guidi doing the art, and, you know. Okay, but what's the why? What are you right. saying? I just, I, I just couldn't justify the, the markup my shop put on it. <sighs> All right, that's, so, a, that's a little yeah. bit of a better answer. But, yeah, we like Guido Guidi yeah. in this house, Jeremy. <laughs> well, no, I, I like Guido. The, the why I was going to get is what I thought he was asking. Nobody, nobody would have been mad if you put those two covers away and gotten the Guido yeah, cover. I I, that's exactly. what we're saying. Well, yeah. whatever. I also got the cards with it, and I, I opened them. Um, not really going to go through them. It was a, a Sergeant Cup and a Bumblebee as the big cards. So I think I got, Yay. I got both of them already. Uh, I also got Transformers Ghostbusters number one, which came out a few weeks ago, but I hadn't been to my shop since then. And now uh, the, the thing that I, was my favorite thing this week 
my Respect the Prime Ooh. albums came in. Unfortunately, I couldn't tell from here which was which. I got an Autobot and a Decepticon. I only opened one, and it was the Autobot. So I'll show you what it looks like. Wow. Nice. Shiny. Cool. cool. You clearly don't handle records a whole lot. I, I <laughs> okay. I, I know. Um, but it was cool. Um, I've listened to it a few times already. Um, I'm going to be digitizing it so I don't have to handle the discs a lot. But the, the – the, I'm just going to set this up here so I can do it when I'm not on camera. But the, the art in here is great. Casey Collar art again. Uh, John Paul above That's doing cool. the colors and it's really cool with the um the different artists they he had room to do links to all the artists and Jimmers did a little letter in here basically thanking everyone for supporting the project um I don't know if you guys are familiar with it but this is um all goes to cancer research and it's a That's awesome. a cover album of the 86 movie soundtrack by industrial artists. So that's awesome. I got that one. This one, I'm assuming it's the Decepticon one. It's still in the shrink wrap. And then in there was some promos for other distortion prime stuff, but I don't know if Jimmer sent this as a joke or not, but he sent a little promo thing for the mission of uh, power of the primes. <laughs> so that, that was awesome. Uh, we love, may they rest in peace. <laughs> yeah. We love Jimmer's and, uh, it's a, a great remaster of an album. I now have what two copy, like the convention version, the regular version, and the constructed cold EP. So you can never have too many copies of the '86 movie soundtrack. Dude, you clearly hate cancer. I, I do. It, cancer took my dad, so you know, fuck cancer. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, that, that's all I got. All right, uh, Daryl. All right. So, yeah, I have some stuff this week as well. I did get uh, the same comic uh, Jeremy got. I got the Casey Collar one, though. I also got Transformers Ghostbusters. <laughs> Gobots? Number one. Gobots? <laughs> no, this is Ghostbusters. Gobots? <laughs> uh, this is the uh, the Dan Shooning cover. Uh, this is part one of the five-part conjoined piece. Uh, then I also got the Nick Roche cover because it's Nick Roche and he's awesome. And this is a yeah, really good cover. Uh, and then I got the Alex Mills cover. So yeah, I got that cover too. The good one. It's a good cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did get a pack of cards in my thing. I haven't opened it yet. I'm going to do it because we agreed to do this and no one else was <laughs> doing it. So yeah, did, we agree? Oh, okay. did we agree? <laughs> I got Flame War. Nice. Woo! I don't think I have Flame War yet, so that's good. It was. Uh, I'm not going to open it now. Flame War was in the comic that you read, too. Yeah, there you go. Um, because of the new comic series, I thought, you know what? I'm going to pick up this guy. I wasn't going to before, but I got Quake. So I bought uh, Titans Return Quake. It's still sealed, but uh, yeah, I thought, you know what? That's kind of cool. I'll pick up Quake. Nice. And then the uh, the last thing I got this week, this is something I've had uh, kind of kicking around at the at the comic shop for a bit, kind of waiting. Um, this is uh, G1 uh, sealed, what? poorly, but sealed, uh, cassette tapes of <sighs> Frenzy and uh, Laserbeak. Nice. How much? This was 100 bucks. Fuck. It's, it's poor. It's, it, you can tell the, the, the plastic is uh, yellowed and kind of cracked on one side, but it's still sealed. It's never been opened. And the cardboard is kind of kind of warped there a bit. You can really see the yellow there. Mm. It's, yeah. uh, but it's G1 and it's sealed and it's mine now. It'll go, it'll go up there with the rest of my G1 figures in the packaging. Yeah. But that was my week. Good haul. Very nice. Now off to TFCon and getting more shit. <laughs> it's only money. Can't take it with you. That's right. But you can't take the plastic with you either. You can pretend, though. You yeah. can get buried with the plastic, at least. Yeah. yeah. 
Charles, what'd you get? All right. Uh, So first off, uh, I was not on the show last week because it was my uh, anniversary, my 18th wedding anniversary. Um, Oh, we just thought you hated us. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, congrats. And this this was the present for my wife. So this uh, uh, Back to the Future shirt. It's not Transformers. Transformers. She's telling telling she wants to go back in time and undo the mistakes (laughs) of the past. (laughs) Does she miss Chubby Charles? Is that what's going on? (laughs) Maybe. Well, this is this is uh, this was an appropriately sized shirt. So it's so Chubby Charles couldn't wear this shirt. (laughs) uh, What size is that shirt? That's XL. Nice. Fucking a man. Congratulations. Thanks. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, this it, it came. It also came. I for, I should have brought the um, the packaging. It came in like a box that looked like the vintage VHS tapes. So oh, that nice. was cute. Oh, cool. Mm. Um, also, uh, I got a package from Jeremy, and that included my How, trans like missions the lanyard. <laughs> the box was very nice. Oh, I think I, it, it's it's reachable. I can show it. Make sure I don't show the address. <laughs> this is the ultimate of dick moves, Jeremy. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> this is the box that came, it, my, I, I was I, I didn't get the mail so my daughter was like you got a box from Hasbro I was like really <laughs> <laughs> yeah the one thing I bought from Hasbro Pulse so the, it was worth it uh, but yeah so in there that the lanyard uh, I did since I didn't get to go to TFCon Chicago last year I didn't get mine so now I have mine and uh, this will have my badge for TFCon Toronto. Uh, also, uh, the Transformers number one. Uh, this, comic book what, for what kids the, cover. Yeah, the comic books for kids. So this is one one for me, one for Daryl. Uh, these are cool. These also support uh, helping kids with cancer. So. Well, this is just helping kids with, in hospitals. They they, they send they send kid friendly books to kids in hospitals all over the world. Here's a transmission shirt for Daryl's daughter. Hey, so finally, cool. finally, awesome. finally Daryl, after <laughs> after months, you get it. A year. A months, year. year. It's been a year. I'll be shocked if she still fits it, but she I, should. I'll, I just <laughs> I just have to forget to bring this with me, and then the <laughs> and then the store <laughs> will be becomes your daughter's. <laughs> Out of my hand. <laughs> Uh, I get, I did get comics. Um, my shop has stopped carrying variant covers for the regular Transformers series, so I only got the cover A for Transformers number eight. Um, I did open my cards, so I got uh, Dinobot Snarl. Uh, okay. Oh, you got slugged the last time. Yeah. Well, this one is at least uncommon, not common, so there you go. Um, I also got the Ghostbusters, Transformers Ghostbusters. I got all three covers because my shop was covering, carrying all the variants for that. So because they carry variants for Ghostbusters, is, yeah. <laughs> Dan Schoening, uh, Nick Roche, and Alex Milne. So I guess I should bring the Alex Milne one with me to get signed. All right, and last but not least. My Ectotron came. So this Ooh. is nothing in that box. <laughs> they forgot something. <laughs> this is the other uh, Hasbro Pulse box I got this week. So, yes, I took him out already. Here he is. Ectotron. Nice. Oh, shit. Was there a part of you thinking you got two Ectotrons? <laughs> <laughs> With Slimer. It was a possibility. It crossed my mind <laughs> until I saw the box. <laughs> Success, Jeremy. <laughs> um, I didn't even realize he was doing that. Yeah, Ectotron. Uh, I I got in with the cheap pre-order, so my pre-order was ten dollars less than when it went up later. So that was cool. nice. Um, this is a cool figure. Um, it is a bit of a shell former, like all the robot bits are. Yeah, just right there. Mm. Uh, but this 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 is a nice Ecto One. This this is a really nicely detailed Ecto One. Uh, the Transformer, okay, I mean, I, there's a little nitpicks. The head sculpt is not great. There's no Autobot symbol on the Transformer when he's in robot mode. There's no Autobot symbol in vehicle mode either, but, you know, there is a Ghostbuster symbol. 
but yeah, that's uh, that's all I got this week. It's a it was a pretty heavy week for me. Um, probably be heavy next week for TFCon. I might have to space those out. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, but yeah. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and let's finish up the show with some convention news. All right. Uh, this week is TFCon Toronto, and we have a couple exclusives here that have been announced. Ages 3 and Up has announced the Ocular Max PS18 Zinnia. This is basically the Paradron Medic colors of the RC mold. It's like the, the teal body with um, some pink accents. And this is, you know, this is their RC mold. She has the, looks like the flip down glasses and it, I mean, it looks, I think her, her RC mold is, or their RC mold is a pretty good one. So if if you are one of those that likes, you know, to get all the variants, you get the paradigmatic one. This is a really cool figure. And they had a, a version of this, uh, the, the stealth RC at the Chicago convention. And this mold is getting some real high praise for being a really great RC figure. Uh, so Liz, if you're, you know, in the market for a third party RC, I have many. Do you have this one? No, that's not RC. It's paired on. No, no, I'm saying this one in the (laughs) RC version. Oh yes, I do. Oh, okay, cool. (laughs) So yeah. So you can comment on how cool this mold is, then. This mold is really cool. Fucking way Fucking to take, way notes, to take kid. notes, kid. Well done. <laughs> well done. Uh, way, to, way to expand on my point there. It's, it's really nice. That's, I, you, you pretty much covered it. <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah, I'm uh, looking forward to this. Uh, I'd prefer to get it in RC colors myself, so I, I probably will pass on this mice. Uh, for me, but uh, but yeah, I'm sure there'll be a, a few RCs kicking around there. Uh, next thing we they have announced is Mastermind Creations R32 Broken Mirror Stray, and this is a red uh, drift. So, is this like Deadlock or just red drift? Well, I mean, Deadlock was what black or. Deadlock was the yeah. Deadlock was black. This is I think Deadlock's also was a different mold. It had some different uh, accents on it. So yeah. So this is the drift version. It I don't know what. There's something about. I mean, it looks nice, I guess, but just the red colors. It especially with where they have yellow accents, it looks a little bit like like Hot Rod. And I'm, it just it in my head, it's not doing. I don't know. It just doesn't feel right to me, and I don't know. It, I, I am sure there are drift fans out there that will love it, though. And the head sculpt is a little different, so uh, you know, if you want it, uh, this will be one hundred and twenty dollars. And I forgot to mention the um, the Zinnia is going also going to be one hundred and twenty dollars. They are available in limited quantities at the MMC booth, so probably if you don't get there immediately, first thing. You won't get it, and premium ticket holders get first shot on Friday evening. So, I imagine these are going to both go super fast. They'll go pretty quick. Um, I wanted to mention before we leave convention news uh, here is that this is we've gotten what two exclusives so far. Uh, TFCon is usually good for four to six, so um, within this this week leading up to the convention. Uh, we're going to uh, likely get a bunch more. So, I mean, here we are. We're recording on Sunday. The show's going to go up on Wednesday. Um, there may have already been another one announced between mm-hmm. recording and publication. But uh, stay, uh, you know, glued to social media. We'll be we'll be posting about uh, um, the, the exclusives as they come out and, um, and anything we kind of hear about on the show floor as TFCon has had them very very late showing up to the convention yeah. like as of the morning of opening the convention doors these things are rolling in so um yeah so keep uh, if you're if you're looking for something and you know uh, you know keep uh, keep your um 
Twitter's open to uh, to transmissions on Twitter and 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 watch for uh, any news on on upcoming exclusives. Yeah, definitely. So that is it for convention news, and you know, hope everyone going to TFCon has a great time. Yoshi and I will be here next week. <laughs> Happily yeah. here next week. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I think that'll do it for this episode of Transmissions. Uh, again, we want to thank our guests, Liz and Ben, for joining us. Uh, check out Sidefest Northwest. So, sidefestnw.com. I think I got that right. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and we will have all the details for Sidefest Northwest in Transmissions Alt Mode, so stay tuned for that this Friday, and uh, you can hear all the details there. But uh, yeah, check that out. Thanks again for having us. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much. It was fun. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah, you guys were great guests, so thanks for coming on and uh, and hanging out with us. Please do come back. Mm -hmm. Anytime. Please invite us back. <laughs> All right, everyone. We'll be like Yoshi. We, you won't be able to get rid of us now. <laughs> you could probably be on the show more often than Yoshi. <laughs> <laughs> you are a dick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Uh, years and years of playing in rock bands, so yeah, I'm a little deaf. <laughs> what? Well, Mike's Mike's gonna be pissed about alt mode, but the toy show should be good. <laughs> I think we were just discussing how to make him busier, and I think we found a solution. Switch our names around, so I'm not associated with the deep throating. I want to be associated with it. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we know. Super. Jesus Christ. I'm just going to do this in post. This is stupid, Daryl. You're welcome, Mike. <laughs> That's an outtake. That is an outtake. <laughs> I'll do it in post. I Jeremy, I want I want it I want that as a uh, clip. <laughs> I don't need your pity clapping. <laughs>